Hi, it's Emma here from Love From Yoga and welcome to my yoga shed at the bottom of my garden. It's, it says 10 to 6 on, um, on a Tuesday and for those of you who know me and who know Love From Yoga and I've done my classes, this is the time that I normally do my up with bird yoga. Um, obviously that's been cancelled these days because we have a little bit more time at home that we don't have to get onto that hamster wheel every morning and get into the city so um so that means that's been cancelled for the time being um because you don't need it but it seems that my body does because this morning like my built-in clock woke me at this time so um i'm here and i decided that i would record just my practice with you um that maybe you or my practice this morning that uh, maybe you would like to join in and um, be part of it and um, this is a recording um, as you know I've just started my live classes so I very rarely in fact I've never done a recording before so this is the first recording um, and I'm just going to do it as though I've taken you through it but obviously I don't have you to look at but something that you can enjoy um, if you're a complete beginner I can give you modifications to the class if you are um, not new to yoga you can beef this up by putting in a couple of sun salutations and put vinyasas whenever you don't want. But do what you can and don't be afraid of sitting out and coming into child pose when you can't. Um, I'm also, you might have noticed that I'm layered up. It's zero degrees this morning outside in the shed, so you can probably hear my heaters that I might just unplug actually in a moment before it gets up. But the sun is beginning to rise, so hopefully it will get lighter in here too as we get warm ourselves and I've also if you see me serving I've also got myself which is also nice a nice warm tea so just a herbal tea just to get our um, digestive juices going this morning nice to wake up our digestive juices so no cold drinks for me today I'm going to work on that that agony in the belly that kind of fire burning uh, fire burning goodness that you know, that the yogis believe help break down um, and fight off all infections and bits and pieces, which is just what we need at the moment, so should we get started? Okay, there's no music, but I have got a playlist on my Spotify if it's something that you'd like to listen to as well. I'm going to take my socks off and I'm going to get started on that. Hope you're enjoying this class, everyone. <laughs> so I'm just coming into a comfortable seated position. I'm actually coming in um, Ardha Padmasana, so I'm in half lotus pose. You can probably see one of my legs is up and over the other, but I'll just sit comfortably. Also, if you've got any squidgy grips or a cushion, it's nice to stick that under your bum cheeks. This helps lift and tilt your pelvis, give you that long straight spine. So let's take a nice, deep, grounding breath together, just letting the and slowly take Anjali or a prayer pose. Knowing that this prayer pose was something that we did way before any religion. It's a, a human, a primal instinct to bring the hands together in this way. And to consider ourselves part of a, a being, a human being. species that we are, connecting ourselves to the whole world at this time. Take a deep grounding breath in. And exhale. Take in another inhale, letting the belly rise. And exhale. Just making sure you're comfortable, making any adjustments. If you're not, then the shoulders drop down, making sure there's no tension, tension there. So the thumbs rest on the sternum, on the chest plate, and gently push the fingers together. So you feel that slow activation in the arm. Nothing 
too strenuous, a one out of 10 strenuousness. You feel the spinal column floating on top of the pelvis. And imagine those vertebrae floating in this sort of liquid that they're connected by, these little discs. Floating on top of each other, with this space in between them, rising up through the lumbar spine, up through the middle back, up into the space behind the shoulders, the thoracic spine, into the cervical spine or the neck, and then up into the skull. Feel that like pushing up into the skull, or maybe pulling up as though someone's drawing you up from the crown of your head, like lifting you on a silver string. I don't know why it's silver, it just is today. Feel free to choose any other colour of string that's pulling your crown of the head towards the sky. And notice how you do that, how you feel this opening in the front there. Gently find the Fujiana Banda, the belly button towards the sky. And maybe you also find Mola Top of the cervix and women on the perineum in men. Again, just a gentle touch of this, not squeezing the belly in. Feel yourself soft in here. With a few more breaths, take a deep inhale. In through the nose. And for the moment, let's just breathe out through the mouth. In through the nose. And then out. Let's start this class with the thought of gratitude. To imagine ourselves for everything that we have, even in this time of this crisis, although it's a global crisis, we're not alone. And I think it's a crisis with the small C. It's a shift, a momentary shift. It won't last for long, although our memories of it will. I just want you to bring to mind something that you're so eternally grateful for. Maybe it's the food in your fridge. Maybe it's the fact that we live in a rich country with a great NHS. Maybe it's your family, having your family close. Maybe it's your health, the air you breathe. The fact that the sun still rises every morning regardless of it all and sets in. I want these thoughts to reside within you for the whole of the class today. Just utter gratitude for all that you have. And then I'd like you to dedicate this class and send it out to someone you love today. And I'm sending this out to my good friend Kim via Aberdeen in LA. All my love is sent to you and your family. Take another inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to twist through, taking the hand onto the knee. It doesn't matter which way you go, we're going to take the other hand behind you. Slowly pulling the navel in, dropping the chin slightly, and twisting through the body. Keeping this around and effect through the sit bones but at the same time lifting up so don't just kind of shrug, drop through the shoulders let the body lift and raise and slowly twist and then come back to center and take your hand and feeling the belly lift and rise you start to squeeze through 
the belly button. So we're working the hip flexors here, we're working the internal muscles of the belly. And the transverse abdominals, the intercostal muscles between the ribs. And begin to curl into the lats and the back. And of course, maybe the muscles of the hand. We never just move one muscle. It's a body, yeah. We never just move the body, it's a mind. So bringing your mind, body, and your spirit, or your soul, or your essence into practice today. You reach in the hands back to center, and then to take your arms up towards the center. And as we exhale, let's lower the body down. It's releasing through. So, what you feel is that you're pulling and sending the weight back down the whole of the spine into the sacrum and down into the bottom. So there's an arrow from the spine pushing to the floor. And then as we inhale, pull up through the belly. And then exhale. You can draw the elbows down if you want to, or you can keep your hands straight, tuck the chin in, and just begin to let the head surrender. And if you feel that bending the knees, or you've got a knee injury or an ankle injury, and this is just too much, feel free to take your legs out to the side. come back down. So you can stay here for as long as you want to. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, you can find a little lift. So I'm just pulling up and I'm letting this pull up through my Ujjayana band to the navel towards the spine. And then as we exhale, I'm, I'm surrendering the body down. Letting the head gently tilt till the chin comes halfway to the chest. Slowly working the body to open, stretch out. Before we begin to then build some muscle, some muscle mass and working our metabolism. Just slowly warming up the body as we inhale. I'm gonna come back to center. Taking off, as you can see, I'm layered up. It's cold outside, so you never come to yoga with just one layer on. This is always different temperatures that the body will be at. Reach the arms up to the side. And exhale, bring the hands out. Inhale, lift them. Exhale, bring the hands out. One more time, inhale. Imagine that you can feel the air. So you're compressing the air molecules, like playing a piano accordion. Only playing it above your head. So Jimi Hendrix, or one of the rock stars, would play a, a piano accordion above the head. This is how they play it. You slowly condense that air. As you bring your hands to hand up. And then keeping that straightness in the back, move through the shoulders, moving through the elbows, bringing the hands to hand. Okay, let's roll over the hands and onto the knees. If that's feeling too much this morning, just come to a tabletop pose. Tabletop pose, we pat, we're lining the structures up into above each other. So if you were to build a house and your structures and your walls were built with the elbows, so all the people to put the teeth, they will fall. So the same with the body. Structures stack over structures, so joint above joint above joint. Basically saying wrist over shoulders, knees under. Taking the tabletop pose, we're going to slowly round through in a couple of pack cows. So as we inhale, we drop the belly and we lift the chest. Don't need to lift the chin too high. Lovely. And we're looking to kind of drop the shoulders through a little bit as well. So we're working on the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine, shoulders and, and, the, and the, the back of the hips. So the sacrum spine here, we're working and further up. As we inhale, we pause. As you exhale, come back. I love this pose in the morning. This always reminds me of just, you know, it's a really good kind of litmus test as to where my body is, particularly the spine. You know, some days we wake up and for whatever reason, the back is telling you, it's a little indicator going, uh-uh, a little, little orange light here, it's, it's not good. And this is my go-to pose for that. This is one pose if I were to do daily, it would be. Yes. So this is our cow, an Indian skinny cow, not like one of our 
the Persian cows. And then this is a cat pose. And then the cat kind of gets switched. Inhale, come forward one more time. And then exhale. Let me come back to a tabletop. We're going to slowly bring that left knee in ever so slightly towards the middle. Just to just in case you're not, not quite right. Pull the navel in. And then we're going to lower the leg up to a half by hydro pose. But I like the naughty name for it, which is the job boy pose. Lifting that leg up. Squeeze the belly in. And then as we exhale, we bring it down. Inhale, lift it up. Work with your breath. Each movement, let it marry with your breath. Exhale, let the knees just kiss. Try not to bring the knees to the floor. Inhale, lift up. Exhale. Inhale, rise. Right. Exhale, lower. Nice and slow. Inhale, rise. Right. Exhale, slow. Lower, lower, lower. What I was thinking of then is if you've got a certain track on, if you're listening to music and you're working quickly, you can do two in the time I do one. I just like to take it slow. There's no reason, like if you're in a gym class, you take things fast. I like to find the alignment with the body rather than just kind of flip through them as fast as you can. Let's bring that knee down and take it the other way, or the other leg, or rather. Pulling in through Udiana Banda. So for those of you who don't know, Udiana Banda is taking your navel and squeezing it up towards the back of the body and then having a gentle lift up towards the spine. So how my teacher taught me and how I teach my students is this, imagine you're in a beach on a bikini, oh, how lovely, someone's got their camera out, what do you do? <gasps> suck your belly in, okay? But we suck it in here, not here. So we suck it in here, okay? Udiana Banda. Mula Banda kind of usually um, rotates and brings that, that Banda, that lock, in, lock in itself, um, to, which is right at the kind of the, in the anal region, so it's the top of the cervix in the middle. And it's kind of as though you're stopping yourself going to the loo. And you can also achieve this by the, the, the an, an easiest way if you're having a struggle going, what is she on about? It's to think of just gently tucking your tailbone under. So there's my tailbone, and then I'm just gently tucking it under. And there'll be quite a lot in that. So getting that idea of not sticking your booty out, which is kind of like, this is like, hey, this is how a beautiful woman is, this kind of S shape. Boobs out, booty out. It does look beautiful, your booty, when it's sticking out like that, but it's kind of like a Rob, Robert Crumb like, shelf for, you, for your beer. It's not supposed to be a beer shelf. You have to tuck that under so, the, so that the spine is long. Even then the glutes start to work. Otherwise, we're just going to take the weight into the lower back and not use these beauty glutes. And that's what we really want to work. The glutes are so important to the body. I've been holding up the whole of the upper body and, of course, the whole of the back of legs as well. All right, I've gone off a while. I'll come back. I'll come back to the mat. So I'm just coming back. Let's just sway here, a little bit of freestyle. And let's go to the other side. So we're going to inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it down. Working with your breath, maybe your ujjayi breath. If the ujjayi breath is something that's new to you, then there's probably enough things that are going on today. So don't worry about it. It will come when it comes. It's like a slight constriction in the back of the throat, but just long, deep breathing, working in your lungs is what any yoga teacher wants you to do. There's so many different styles um, of yoga that teach different types of breathing, so it's not for me to say which is right or wrong. What's right or wrong is what your body is telling you to do. So just being aware that you're not panting. And you're really letting the breath of the body take in and nurture the muscles as they Falling for more oxygen in this anaerobic respiration. Feeling that in the belly. And one more. And then bring that all the way back. You're going to sit back into child's pose. This is your go to pose whenever you feel that you need a little rest if it's too much. Letting the third eye come to the mat, drawing the sit bones down. Letting the hands surrender. Or you can, again, you can come up onto the fingertips. And as we let go of everything, knowing that the tide will pass, it will go out and it will come in again. So nothing is permanent. So 
feeling that connectivity to not only your family, but to your street, to your town, to your country, to the whole globe, to this universe. You feel this Need to warm up. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> and then let's rise up again, roll over the toes. Bend the knees. So we up power on the toes. Send the belly. Oh, elbow. <laughs> Excuse me, I told you it was a, a live recording. No editing here for you guys. It's all warts and all. Draw the heels down and push into the shoulders. So we join the back of the body. Oh, sorry, the front of the body towards the back of the body. Inhale. Exhale. Let the head drop. Look towards your knees or your navel. Pull the belly in. And stay static if you want to, or you can walk through plantar fascia with your feet, start to walk through. I'm going to stay static. As we inhale, we're going to step the left foot and the right foot forward. Hold on to the elbows, keep bending the knees, drop the chest to the belly, no, the chest to the thighs. And then slowly think of the straight over the head. Check that your feet are nice and parallel. Just need to take that tissue again. So glamorous. And just holding yourself here, and holding yourself down, and slowly rocking from side to side. Waking up the spine, the belly, the shoulders, let the head drop. And then as we inhale, we're going to rise up and just move it on my mat so that you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to lift the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, draw the hands into your heart centre. Just taking the thumbs onto the sternum. And as we inhale, rise all the way. You are feeling open enough in your back. You can take a little back bend here. Don't feel the knee to push it too far. You can put a bend in the knees. Exhale, come all the way back to centre. Draw the hands to the back. Hands to the Okay, we're going to warm things up a little bit. We're going to bring a little bit more movement into the poses. As we inhale, come up halfway. Hands on shins up, fingertips on the floor. And as we exhale, take the hands down. Step back into your back. This is too much, draw your knees down and stay with your knees down. If not, we're going to hold it in our plank. Push it up into the space behind the shoulders, squeezing the glutes down, pulling the belly in, the thighs are active. Pushing away the space between the fingers. And focusing on the breath. We're going to come down to Chaturanga, although the first one today I'm bringing the coming down with the knees down Chaturanga. Elbows come into the ribs. Like a little shelf of the body, we're going to inhale. I'm going to bring the knees down of my first baby cobra. Just leading back with the shoulders, lifting the fingers up off the mat. Exhale, take the hands down, and then push all the way back to downward facing. Holding it in your downward facing dog for a moment. Tissue shelf. Here, bend the knees, get a push jump forward to the front of the mat. And exhale, lower the body down. There to me. Inhale, bend the knees, take the arms all the way up, come all the way up and jump into Haskasper. Take a back bend if you want to here, and as we exhale, draw the hands back into the past. Let's go again. Inhale, rise. Sura Namaskara A, some salutation A. Exhale, fall, head to me. Inhale, rise up halfway. I like to slide my hands at my feet, get that sense of touch, that healing sense of touch, even if it is my touch on my body. Exhale, lower the head to the floor. Surrender to the knowing what will be your good. As we step back, step back into love. That's what we need, love and compassion. As we exhale, this time lowering the body to the earth. Bring your knees down if you want to. 
you can hover here like this, or you can, you can't see from my bricks, you can bring the knees down, and then come up this time again, leading with the shoulders a little bit higher into high cobra. Or if you want to, in your practice, in full practice in Chaturanga, you can see the gap in between my legs, but Udra up, up the tracing dog. Exhale, roll over the toes, send those sit bones high, push back down. Hold here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. As we exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or maybe jump towards the front of your mat. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands into your heart center. Feeling the body warming up. Inhale, rise. Take a deep inhale, lift the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, lower to the earth, surrender down. Let go of all the fear. Inhale, slide the hands up the shins. Gently pushing back to a long straight back. When I teach this, I want my uh, students to be at tables so I can put tablecloths on them and have a fancy dinner on their back. And I do this by pulling the belly up, squeezing the belly up, so that automatically straightens through the back. And again, the arms, there's no tension in the arms, they're just there, little levers. And then taking the hands down, so we're going to jump back into plank, lower down to chaturanga on the exhale, find the inhale breath as we come up and practice, whether you're practicing cobra or up dog, doesn't really matter, whatever your body's wanted to do, push back into down dog. And then let's take one last one, bend the knee, stick the belly onto the knees, onto the thighs, keep that force pushing back, look forward and as we inhale, Step towards the front of the mat, rise up halfway. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands into your heart center. Last one, round up, sun salutation. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, take the hands down. Step your jump back into the plank, lower the chest down. Inhale, rise up into cobra or up dog. Exhale, push back down and face it. Lovely from here, we're going to reach that right leg up high. The sun's beginning to rise, the energy's beginning to come into the body as we exhale, we're going to ripple it forward, three legged plank. If this feels too much, you can bring the other knee down and we can just do this, like this pose here, or we can extend and then round through the back door of the head to the knee. Inhale, lift back up into your dog or your knee down version. Inhale, ripple forward, three, then exhale, take it back. Inhale, we're going to step that right foot forward. Now we draw the left knee down, tuck your tailbone under, rise up, lifting up nice and straight. Exhale, bring the hands into the heart center. Inhale, lift up, try and think as you're pulling your ribs to create the space, lifting up off your pelvis. The back toe is still under, or you can drop it flat. Lovely. And as we exhale, we're going to take your right hand onto your right thigh and draw the body over to the left. No, the left of the body over to the right. And rise up, reach both arms. This time we're going to let the hips come forward and take the arms back. Now it's up to you how far you want to take this. You're going to interlace the fingers so your index finger is pointed and the others are linked into a Kali Sword Mudra or Charlie's Angel Mudra. And as we exhale, we're going to bring the arms forward, come up onto the heel, and then draw the hands each side of the leg. Pushing the sit bones away, just making any adjustments to straighten it up, pulling in through the belly. And then as we inhale, we roll over the foot, tuck your tailbone back under, rise up. Take your Kali's mudra, so I don't know whether you can see, I'll come forward, taking the hands. Another, just so. And then we're going to push the hips forward. As we draw the body back. Again, if your body is cold this morning, don't feel free. Feel free not to go crazy. Come back to centre, draw the arms forward as though we're just 
shifting. So we're not moving the hips here, we're kind of moving on the spine, draw the hands down, and then again, come up onto the toes and draw back. Don't let the bottom come onto the heel. Just because you've come down, doesn't necessarily mean you've come down further, it's just a different pose. <laughs> I mean, do it if you want to do it, it's totally fine. Any pose is better than no pose, so who, who knows what the pose knows. Inhale, come up, rise up, tuck your tailbone one more time. Let's take it back as we bring the hips forward. Stretching up through the armpits if you've got any more movement in the arms. Exhale, draw the hands down, pick up the heel, straighten the leg, head to We're going to roll over the toe, pick up the back foot, lift it up. And if you've got this in you, we're going to rise up through the body, rotating the thighs and towards each other. And then as we exhale, bring the hands into the heart. Step the back foot in a little bit. Lovely. Tuck the tailbone under, rise up. And as we exhale, we'll slowly lower the body forward. Inhale, come up. Taking the hands back. Exhale, coming forward. Inhale, bend it back. Exhale, bend it forward. Take the hands all the way down. Step both feet forward. Come up, up. Exhale, lower the head with your hands. Put a bend in your knee if you want to. You can probably feel that working here in your glutes. So you're stretching out the hamstrings. The hamstrings are connected into these little sit bones at the bottom of your pelvis. Let's rise up. Exhale, bring the hands into the heart. Inhale, come up again. Exhale, lower the Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, set the left foot and the right foot back or jump back into your plank. Yes. If you want to, we're going to move into a side plank. If you want to take this as a modification, bring the knee down, or you can bring the other foot across, if that makes sense. Whatever is good for you, if you're having an, an injury, please bring the knee down. Don't feel like you need to push the body. If you want to, you can lift the leg up. You can lower it down. You can draw this arm all the way across towards the windows or wherever you are, and lift the leg up. And we can take some little crunches here. Elbow to knee, and then come back to normal plank. Again, modify your knees down, squeeze the glutes and let the body be released here, not full of tension. Let's take it the other side. Taking whatever other modifications. Now I've got a shoulder injury on this side, so I'll modify it. Taking the arm all the way over, that stretch in the armpit. Lifting the leg if you feel comfortable to do so on your knees and your shins, and maybe taking some crunches. This way, working with the breath, and then coming all the way back, lower down from Chaturanga, inhale, come up into your up dog, exhale, push back into child's pose, or downward facing dog, and lift the left leg up back. Hold it here, you don't have to do the next bit, if you want to, you can bring the knee forward, Exhale, take it back. Inhale, bring it forward. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, bring it forward. Exhale, take it back. This time, stepping that foot all the way down. Drawing the knee down to the earth. Inhale, rise up. Know what we're doing now. We're going to take to uh, Kali's sword, mudra. Roll it forward. Inhale, lift up, drawing the hips and the hips are sliding through here. Go as much or as little as you need to. There's nothing to be said for taking it too far. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that your muscles and your connective tissues are a little bit hip. Lowering it forward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lift forward. Inhale. Inhale, come forward, draw the hands down. We're going to come and lift the toes of the left leg, drawing the head down towards the knee, pushing the sit bones back, squeezing the belly in. 
Inhale, rise up. Exhale, down, straighten the leg as we go. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, rise up. And take it last one, hold it here. Feeling that lovely stretch in your hamstrings. Flex your left foot. As we inhale, really feel the foot coming down. Take your hand off the back in a little bit. Rise up, lift and up. Same pose only with the knee up. If this is too much, keep the knee up. Lovely. So here we go. Same thing. Come forward. Exhale, take your foot. Inhale, come forward. Straighten in the back leg. Inhale, bend the knee back. Inhale forward, straighten in the back leg. Exhale. And then this time, we're going to step both feet towards the front of the mat and lower the head down. And just hang here in Uttanasana. Just need to turn the heating off. And while I'm at it, take some tea. Be grateful for all that we have. The sun is shining, there's birds feeding in the garden. <clears throat> and here we're going to set the right foot back. We're going to have the left foot forward, and as we inhale, come up into your warrior two. Dropping through the heels, drawing, thinking of drawing this thigh towards the earth, knee towards the little toe, pushing to the outer edge of your back foot. Inhale. Exhale, let the arms, just check your back arm, look towards the middle finger of your foot. And as we inhale, lift up and up. And as we exhale, we're going to take that all the way down. Step back into a deep runner's lunge. Heel and ankle at the front foot in line. Now I've got some bricks, if you've got bricks or books, really good. Take them either side of you, that helps just lift the chest. Push that back leg back as far as you want to. And then draw the right knee down, taking your bricks away momentarily, lift the left hand up, twisting through. Draw, think of drawing the right hip towards the left heel. And then from here we can maybe pick the back foot up and hold on to the foot. Don't worry if it doesn't come, we can always take a strap around the foot or just lift the foot. Open up through the shoulder. Don't worry, it will come one day. And then as we exhale, come all the way back. We're going to step back into down dog. Inhale, bring the right foot forward. Draw the left knee down, reach the right arm up. Slowly picking up the back foot, feeling the opening in the shoulder. Draw the heel towards the bum cheeks. Hopefully you're nice and warm now. Don't worry, I'm going to pace it. So a little bit of fast, fast, quick, quick, slow. Feel that lovely stretch in your quads. Anyone who's been out doing self-isolated runs or cycles, this is one for you. And then bring that foot down. Bring the body all the way down. We're going to pull, pull back. Bring the left foot in a little bit so the heel is completely down. Now you might find that your bum's sticking out, you probably will, which means what I mean by that is your bum, your right uh, pelvis is twisted. So I want you to pull the belly in and push the right hip back as you draw the left hip forward. From here, lift up. Come up onto the fingertips and then as we exhale, we're going to lower the head to the knee. Where's Vatanasana? Inhale, slowly lift up through the shoulders, keeping your hands on the floor or hands on bricks. And you might be here, and that's perfectly fine. You can take your bricks and hold it here. What I'm looking for is both heels on the floor. Knees can be bent, but eventually they will straighten. But don't lock out your knee joints. And we fold and we release and we bring your head towards the knee. It should actually be, should be kind of called 
um, kind of belly towards the thighs because we can bring the head towards the knee and just round through the back. But what we're looking for is that folding over of the body as though we were hinged in the middle, which of course we are, but we're not hinged with a flat spine that's fixed, thank goodness, we've got a empty one, so we tend to put things into our back when we should. And here we're going to rise up, lift it up, draw the hands up and step the back foot back a little bit, just to sit, just so that we can find the toes and the heel is high. Bring your hands into Anjali, or you can take them to cactus arms, or bring them up, or you can bring them on your hips. And we're going to lower the knee towards the clock, inhale, lift up. Exhale and lower. Inhale, lift up. Building a little bit of muscle mass. Exhale and lower. Keep working like this. Inhale to rise. Exhale to fall. And exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. And exhale, lower. Start to move the sound of your breathing. Remember, yoga is a journey into the self, through the self to the self. Doesn't matter what you look like, it's what it feels like. So everybody, take your modifications if you need to. So for instance, if this is too much, we can say here, we can lower the arms down instead. Working the shoulders rather than the legs. Let's take our last ones here. Oops, I've kind of amalgamated the two. And then as we exhale, we're going to do three breath of fires. As we inhale, sorry, as we inhale, lift up. And it feels better. And one more. Draw both feet. Uh, draw, take your brakes, sit and forward, pick up off that back foot, draw it out behind you, keep your hands on your brakes, or you can bring your hands into the heart centre, push the left heel away, and then if you want to, you can extend your hands forward, even onto a chair, or holding onto the sofa, or whatever you're holding onto, and then take your hands down, step forward, lower down, and just, oh, how are those thighs doing? Nice. Let's inhale and rise up. Exhale, bring your hands to the heart. Momentarily moving the books away from your mat, centering your feet, grounding yourself in the breath. And then inhale and rise. Exhale and lower. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, lower the hands to the earth. Step out your back into plank as you lower the body down to Chaturanga. Inhale, come up. Don't worry if you haven't got your chat around there. I'll do a little master class on that later on. And exhale, push back down and face. Feel the breath in the body. Squeeze the navel in. Push the sit bones away. Imagining your teacher with their hands on your spine, telling you to push your heels away and spread your fingers. And this time we're going to keep the right leg up behind us. Ripple forward, three-legged plank. Inhale, bring it back, and then this time, step the right foot forward. Now I'm going to have my back to you, but I'm sure you'll be fine coming into warrior two on the other side. That same sequence on the other side. Inhale. Exhale, lower knee towards the ankle. No, knee towards the little toe of your front foot. Lift up, come into your exalted warrior. Exhale, flow into your warrior two. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, into warrior two. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, flow into warrior two. Bring both hands down. Roll over the uh, roll through the back foot so the front toe is facing forward. If you want to take your bricks, nice deep lunge. Drawing that back knee down. Taking the left hand down, reach the right hand up for your twist. Draw the knee in towards the chest. And again, if you've got problems in the shoulders, you can just lift the arm up to here or taking the shoulder away or just finding whatever movement you can. Even if it's just a little rotation 
or an extension forward. Just try and that you've got a little bit of stretch in the body. If, it, if the elbow doesn't want to work, you can just hold it here with the shoulders, take your head on the shoulders for that top. If you can, maybe one day we'll stretch it all the way up. Don't get fixated, don't get attached to the pose. We get attached to things. We attach ourselves to things all the time. And this is the, and the yogis believe that this is the key to our suffering, our dukkha, this attached. So we practice non-attachments. We have become attached to our daily lives and now that's being ripped. Like that tablecloth on your straight back or from underneath you. Lovely from here, maybe you want to find the foot and pick it up. Reminding yourself of that one thing you're grateful for. Maybe there's a list of a hundred. And then as we exhale, we're going to take that all the way down, pop up the back foot a little bit, rise all the way up. Exhale, we're going to have a lower lunge. If you do the side before, I'm confused. Never mind. If we did the side before, <laughs> yoga teacher's trick. Honestly, we're really good at this trick. If we did this side before, feel free to swap your legs over. So busy thinking about what's coming that I've forgotten of where I've been. <laughs> Don't worry. Again, you can modify here by bringing the arms down instead. I did say it was my first ever recording, so forgive me. Please don't be attached to your yoga teacher is perfect. Far from it. I think we did do this out before. <laughs> and then we're going to lower the body down. Hopping that back first. I'm actually going to swap my legs over because I'm sure I did this time before. So now I've got my left foot forward. Goodness knows how I did that. I'm going to draw the head down to the knee. So again, back foot flat on the floor. If your foot is high, you're probably too deep, Bodge. So bring your stance in a little bit. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, rise up, come up onto your bricks. Or you can just bring your hands into your heart center. Take that right leg up. Yes, I definitely did it on the wrong side. Don't know how. You'll be able to watch this again and figure it out and giggle at me. And then if you want to extend the arms into Warrior Three. And this time we're going to step back into the nice triangle shaped legs into Pasarita Padrottanasana, taking the hands onto the hips. Make sure the toes and the heels are aligned and fold and forward. Drawing the hands down towards the earth, the elbows down towards the earth. It doesn't matter how far you come. Inhale, take the left hand under the nose, right hand lift up. Exhale, swap it over. Inhale, same thing. Squeeze and lift up the kneecaps, which means squeeze and activate your thighs. Take it the other way. And then slowly take the hands behind you, stretching through, using your elbows, bending through to draw you down. Put a bend in the knee if that feels good when we're looking for this flexion in the spine. Inhale, lift up halfway. We're going to take the weight over to the right foot. Keeping the right foot flat, lift the left heel off the earth. Bring up the body, draw the elbow to the knee, lift up to stand us. Lifting the toes of the extended leg. And then lower the hands down, 
come across, taking it all the way through to the other side. Coming all the way back to center. Then we reach the right toe, hand to the right toe, and the left hand up and away. And then look towards your right foot. And then twist through. So look towards the hand that's down, straighten the legs if you can, twist it through. And then we're going to put a bend in the knee. So we're going to come into Skandasana variation. Nice. You can skip that wobbly bit out. And if you're not feeling that you really find it hard with the heels down here, you can lift the toe. So we walk the hands forward, come into a wide leg down the face of the And then as we inhale, pull all the way back. Come back to center, twist the body up. And we're going to take your right hand, take a break. So this is a bit more advanced. We're going to pick up that back foot, take your right hand onto your right hip. Okay, from here, twist the body open so your ribs come towards the sky, making sure that grip's underneath your shoulder, not near your foot. And then lift the arm up to come into either Chandrasana, up and close. And if you want to, you can extend your gaze to look towards the floor. Step back deep into your warrior two. Inhale, lift up into your exalted warrior. This time as we come forward, we're going to bend the knee. You're going to draw the hand on the inside, on the outside of the leg, and reach this arm either all the way up, bringing the hips forward, and then maybe if you want to draw in the hands parallel, so you've got the back foot and the front hand all in one diagonal. Okay, I'm going to Boost this up. For anyone who's a bit more intermediate, you can wrap your shoulder underneath and maybe take the bind. <laughs> and straighten the knee and bend the knee. Pull the belly in, straighten and bend the knee. Bending in, bending in, bending in and straighten in. Bending in is a good word. And then slowly, if you want to, you can bring that back foot. Making sure your hands are bound, you're going to come up onto the toe of the bound leg. So I've got my left leg bending through the right foot, lifting up, straightening through the torso. And then if you want to, you can extend the leg up towards the sky. Not getting preoccupied or attached to what the pose looks like. Exhale, this is the joy. Take that foot down. Step the foot all the way back. And as we inhale, we're going to take both hands down into a lizard pose. You can drop the back knee back here onto the floor. We're going to, or we can lift up, draw the elbows down. So your shoulder, your left shoulder and the left knee are close together. You can also take a brick or two bricks underneath your elbow so you've still got that straight back. Push your hips backwards, both hips backwards, Shoulder blades, belly button, crown of the head coming forwards, and the elbows squeezing back. Again, modify with the knees down or come up onto your bricks as well. So this is a modification of that. From here, push all the way back, bring your back, um, bring the back foot in. So your feet are on small tram line, uh, tram lines, lift up, rise up, we're going to bring the arms up and then interlace the fingers, no we're not going to interlace, so we're going to take reverse prayer, or hold onto the elbows, straighten both legs, put a little back bend into the body here, and then as we exhale, fold and forward, long straight back again, from here if you want to, you can stay here, you can bend your supporting front leg, and we can lift up into a warrior three balance. And then exhale, bring the arm away. Rise up, lift the arms to the top, the mat. Exhale, take the head down. Inhale, come up, up, up. Exhale, step, or jump back into plank. Lower down, to Chaturanga. 
I'll just skip this bit out and do a child's pose instead. Exhale, push back. Inhale, step the right foot forward. Taking your brick from the lift up the left leg, come up into Adi Chandrasana on the other side. Again, taking your gaze first of all towards the floor. Then lifting it up, just parallel with the head. And then if you want to take your gaze towards the extended left thumb. Notice how different it is when we move our drishti. And then slowly stepping back into your warrior two. Drop through the knees. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, to two. Inhale. Exhale, we draw the elbow down. So you might just want to hang here with the elbow and the arm up towards the sky. If not, we're going to draw the hand to the grip or to the floor and take this other arm forward again, this diagonal line, past Bhattanasana. Past Bhattanasana, sorry. And then if you want to take your bind, you will see how we bind. So the right arm comes under the leg, the left arm comes up towards the back. And we bind the fingers or hold on to the arm, our wrists. Draw that left shoulder up. And then if you want to, you can step the left foot towards the front and slowly begin to lift up. Now use your core here. Whoops. Not your shoulders. And when you're ready, think about straightening the leg. And then as we come back, and all of them down, set the foot back, come back to the ring two. And bring both hands on the inside, stepping back into your lizard. Okay, from lizard, we're going to, so you can keep your hands down. If your elbows are down, you might be able to step back up straight away into dolphin. If not, the variation is that you come back up and push back into downward dog. Now, if you can, with both arms together, lower the elbows to the floor. And then begin to walk your feet in. If you're a beginner, this might be quite strong, so bring your knees down at any point. And have a little rest, if not, we're going to come up. If you want to, you can lift your right leg up towards the sky. You can start to play. You're coming into pincher. And then you can lift the left leg up. So we're just kicking up there, lifting the left leg up if you want to again, bringing off the other leg. And then slowly draw the knees down and step back into child's pose. Or push back into child's pose. Remember that not all these poses are for everyone. As we inhale, we're going to slide the body forward, coming into puppy pose. Making sure your hips are in line with your knees. Feel the breath in your belly. And then as we inhale, rise all the way up. Draw the hands back. We're going to lift up and draw the hands back to the bottom of the mat. Inhale, lift up and rise. Exhale, bring the hands up to the heart. Bend the knees, so all the way down. Take your two peace fingers and take them in between the big toe and the next toe. And then hook them around so your fingernails facing each other like a standoff. Push your toes into your fingers and into the floor. And then pull your fingers up so you've got this two dual forces here. Bend the knee slightly, stick it, they're thinking of sticking the belly onto the chest. No, keep saying that. The chest on the belly onto the thighs. Let your elbows come out at 90 degrees. Let the head draw, curl down. As we pull the feet up, we draw the torso down towards the earth. 
بیشتر انگشتر شونم And then inhale, lift and rise. Take your hands underneath the feet. Maybe you just get your fingers on them, maybe you get your whole hand on them, it doesn't really matter. Pull through the belly, straight and through the back, lift the arms nice and straight. And then as we exhale, we release them. Inhale, lift. And exhale, and lower. And hang here. With each inhale and exhale, we're still lifting, but the kind of micro movements in the breath rather than big movements through the arms. Nice, and then releasing the hands forward. We're gonna take the toes out wide, come up onto the heels and come into a little yogi squat. So my elbows are pushing my knees away to open up through my hips. If this is too much in your hips, you can come here and hold it here as well, especially if you've got a, had a hip surgery or anything like that. Okay, from here we're gonna walk your hands forward, come into dog. A little bit, and then from here we're gonna ripple into plank. If you want to, if this is too much, you can take it into the child's pose and up here and push back. And we do babies doing this. <laughs> if not, we're gonna go rippling forward, plank, to dog. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Inhaling forward. Exhale. Inhale and forward. Exhale. Inhale and forward. And exhale back. A little challenge in your downward facing dog is to lift up your right hand and to take your right hand onto your left hand. Another challenge is from there, maybe to lift and curl. The left leg up. Actually, I'll do that a different way. I'm going to lift the leg up first. <laughs> so find the centre of gravity and then maybe <laughs> you want to hold on to the ankle. I'm just playing. Let's do the other side. So just you can do one or the other. So basically your, your structure needs to be diagonal. So this is a three limb dog. So I've got my right hand holding onto my right ankle. If I wanted to take that into a more challenge, I'm going to lift my right leg first. Find the center of gravity, so we want to really focus, I'm not sure. <laughs> Noticing just tiny increments of moving that foot. Woo! <laughs> Drives you down, lovely. Take a little jump into the middle there. Nice. And as we inhale, fire up those glutes and those heels as we come down. Exhale, we're gonna take the baby squat again. Woo! Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it down. 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 Keep the bottom high, take the hands low, and then bring the heels in together like Charlie Chaplin feet. And again, we're going to, probably you know you in my class know what's coming. We're going to move into Kakasana or Bakasana or Crow Pose. Lift the toes up high, stick the bottom up high, and the knees are coming in towards the back of the triceps. Although I don't mind if you're like, if you're just learning this, that you can actually let them come off. So we aim for the shoulders, we end up somewhere above the elbows where we're beginning. And then from here we come forward and we think of maybe lifting one leg or another or two legs off the mat, whatever feels good for you. So maybe we just sit rocking with this idea of coming forward. Maybe we're just playing. Maybe we can find this pose and come all the way up really easy. Remember, it's the weight of your head coming down. So there we are. We just allow ourselves to rock into it. And then if you want to jump back into plank. <laughs> I'm really joking. You can lower down through Chattavanga. Inhale, come on. Exhale, push back into the dog. Jump forward again and take it again. Nice, and then come all the way down. Okay. Bringing the hands into the heart. We're going to sit down onto the bottom. I'm going to move closer towards you so you can see. Sun is fully risen now. We're going to take the hands, the legs out in front of us. We're going to take the right leg over the left one. The inhale, lift and rise. 
and then as we exhale, you're going to take your right hand around, lift the left arm up. And we can either hug onto this leg, bringing it forward, or we can take the elbow to the outside of the knee, flexing your extended leg and twisting through. And coming all the way back to center. We're going to keep that foot and lift it up. If you want to, you can put a block underneath the knee. Lift the spine straight, lifting all the way up. And then as we exhale, drawing the body forward. Now you may, may feel the heel really pushing into your, your quads. That might feel painful. <laughs> Maybe you've been doing things with your quads <laughs> that have caused that pain. Allow your breath to heal it, to feed it. As we inhale, we pull the belly in, aim for that long straight back and push the lift. Inhale, lift up, we're going to take that left leg. Nowhere, I bring the right leg back <laughs> because I don't know my left from the right. Lifting up. Take the hands just in line with the buttocks. Pushing the heels down again, you might want to, if you're lucky enough to have fleshy parts of your buttocks, take them out to the side. Pull the chest plate up, navel in, pulling it down through the heels of the hands so you feel it in your triceps. And as we come up, you're going to take your left leg over the right leg, reach the right arm up again, hug that leg in, or we can take it out to the side. Twisting through again, pulling up through the whole of the spine into the crown of the head. That little coloured thread that we created in our imagination. Someone's pulling you up high, squeezing. And down, making sure your left big toe is grounded. And then as we inhale, come back. Keep the foot there. This knee doesn't want to go very loud today. Inhale, lift up. Exhale. And again, if you've got a belt, which I do have, you can use your belt instead of assistance, drawing your body down. And then inhale, combine it all the way up. We're going to take that foot, bring it in, take your hands behind you, just about a hand's distance behind you. Inhale, lift up into the tabletop. Drop the leg back, keep squeezing those hips up high. And then we're going to lower down, drop the bottom underneath the hands and swing through. Now bring it down and lift up. And bring it down and lift up. You might want to stay here. If not, you can draw the bottom down. You can extend the legs out wide. Point the toes. Hands again. Just one hand distance behind you. Lift up straight in the legs, draw the toes. To the earth. Bring the foot down, lift the arms all the way up. Exhale, lower. The body to the earth, keeping the back nice and flat. You can also hold onto your big toes here. So you don't want to see it come round through here. You can take your strap. And as we inhale, 
Bring your feet together, soles of the feet together. Again, you can take blocks underneath your knees if you're finding that too much. Draw the heels as close as you can towards the buttocks. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, elbows coming in towards the calves or the thighs. Lower the body down with a straight back. It might only be, when I first started to do this, I swear I moved about half a centimetre. I don't really move that much more now. It's because we're keeping the back straight. With each inhale, finding a little lift to the crown, exhale, lower. And then inhale and rise, draw the feet a little bit further forward. You can bring your hands out in between or around, however, whatever feels good for you. And then draw the head. This one we can round through the back. Drawing the head down to a little well. One day I'll get my head in my feet. I'm not there yet. And apparently when you're there, your feet in this little cup that shape make the perfect head cup for the shape of your head. With that feeling when someone holds you on the top of your head. And the comforting pose of that kind of grounding and being held and held and supported. So I like to sometimes to put my hands on the top of my head here. Just that gain that sense of touch on your crown. Or not, you can just hold them to your feet. And then as we inhale, come up and rise. And we're going to slowly bring your knees in, turn the tailbone all the way down. And then bring the knees wide again, slide the heels up towards the bottom, coming into the same pose, only stood high and upward facing. And allow the body. To the right knee and fold it onto the left one. Twisting through and then the other way, take the right knee across and let the legs twist. So we're just going to windscreen like the legs here, like one of those little football clacky toys. Just use holes, the legs are just doing that. Don't know whether they're only allowed at football matches. I think you know what I mean if you're a certain age, you certainly have them. And then we're going to bring the knees up, draw the legs up, bring the arms up. We're going to lift the head and peel the head and shoulders up. We're going to pause for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift the, the arms go all the way back, make this letter L shape. Squeezing the belly into the back. Long through the arms, long through the legs. Then the chin and the neck from the jaw release. If you want to, you can take hold of your shins and your ankles or maybe peel the head and shoulders and your toes. Open up the lips. Bend the knees. Coming into happy baby, join Tailbone off the floor and straight into one leg or the other. Baby rolling on the sacrum on the back of the spine, the lower spine. And then bringing the knees together, the feet on the floor. Let the heels come to the corners of your mat and let the arms open. Unhook the shoulder blades, let them release, come into Shavasana. Now, depending on where you are, you might want to pop on some warm clothes. You might want to get into bed, pop on some socks, have a jumper or a blanket. It's going to lie here for as long as you've got in your day. I know lots of recordings on the internet seem to skip this part. But this is the most important part of your practice because this is when we seal in what we've done. We internally turn on that parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest. 
we allow the body to grow and to fix and to heal. It's the body saying, okay, I've done the hard work, you can do your bit now. It's when the body actually does start to, you know, the muscles start to work. As in mix, mix in those, making extra muscle tissue. It's going to get all technical turn and I don't know. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Feel the belly rise with the inhale. Feel the belly fall. Feel the belly rise again. the toes and the heels, ankles, releasing through the shins and the calves and the backs of the knees, releasing the kneecap. Just imagine those connective tissues around your knees, behind the knees, crossing over the bones, and over and helping working into the muscle, into the fascia. And if anyone has got knee issues, just send in an extra thought here. Just lingering for a while on your knees and then working up into the rest of the legs, into the quads, the adductors on the inside, hamstrings at the back, the whole of the sides of the thighs, the buttocks the back of the buttocks, the groin, internal organs within the pelvis, within the belly, within the chest. Take another deep inhale. And as you exhale, release the ribs, front, side, and at the back. Focusing on that little gap, that little air pocket of the spine, just under and uh, above the sit bones, above the buttocks, little natural curve. And then feel the space of your shoulders solid on the arm, pressing down, as though your buttocks, the back of your head, your heels, your calves. And that part of your thoracic spine, all got the same intention to draw you down, to release you to the floor. Release the collarbones, the shoulders, the shoulder blades, the back of the body, the upper arms, the biceps, the triceps, the elbows, the lower arms. Fingers, the wrists, the thumbs, the palm of the hand. Just feeling that energy tingling through your fingers, Just drawing it back up along the arms into your heart, down into the body, down into the legs and the toes, and then drawing it all the way back up into your heart. Just feeling all the love that you hold for your family, for your loved ones and your pets. I mean, this is what we come back to all the time is love. Compassion for ourselves, just as we are, not as we wish ourselves to be, as though we were some imaginary person from the TV. Just as we are right now. Because this is all I am. And this is perfectly, perfectly fine. In fact, this is perfect. Because we can't 
be anyone else. So accept who you are with all your love. And then we learn to accept others without judgment for all of theirs. Release the neck, the chin, cheekbones. The lips, the teeth, the tongue, the nostrils, the bridge of the nose. The eyes, the eyeballs, the eyelids and the eyelashes. Brows and your point between the brow, your third eye. Center of intuition, center of just knowing what is good, what is right. Release the whole of the head, mind, body, and soul in one, in this week, in this moment, just now. Just this, just me, here on the mat, with everything. And allow yourself to just completely and utterly be. And as you lie here, I just want to read you a poem called Wherever a Lamp Goes. Wherever a lamp goes, it sheds its light. Wherever a flower goes, it sheds its fragrance. So also spread your love wherever you go. Try to live your life like that. Just love, wherever you go. Just spread your love. Just keep your candle of love going. And whenever you find a candle unlit, light it up, get it going everywhere. There's no other way than that. Remember this principle, hold on to this principle. All answers lie with love. Suffering is all that's left after losing you. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, sigh the breath away. Take another deep inhale. And as you exhale, sigh the breath away. Begin to bring some movement into your fingers and into your toes. Moving the wrists and the ankles. Bringing your right knee in towards you. And your left knee in towards you. And just hugging onto you with the shin. Rocking the sacrum from side to side. So you walk over onto your right hand side. Staying here in this transition for a moment. Buddha said each day we can live a whole new day. We can be reborn. The problems and thoughts and fights of yesterday, we don't have to be within today. We can forgive, forget, let go. And every day we can re be reborn into a whole new day. So as you come up to the seated position at the front of your mat, be reborn into a whole new day. Come up to 
Sukhasana, or take your legs wide if it doesn't feel good. Just bringing your hands into a chin mudra by tucking the index finger under the thumb and letting the other three fingers come wide. Take a deep inhale and hold on to this silence. Hands into the heart. Lift the spine, slowly extend through the arms, lifting up, up into the sky, bringing the hands to seal in Anjali, and let the thumbs come to your third eye, to the lips, to the heart. And let's seal this class together with one round of the mantra of the sound of the universe. Ah. Thank you so much for your practice today. Namaste. And I'll see you next time on the mat. Have a good day.